1724. I write for many reasons. I write not least to quiet my grief. I find that by reliving the adventures that I shared with Minerva, I can lessen the pain of our parting. Besides that, a long sea voyage can be tedious. I must find diversions that fit my station now that I have put up my pistols and cutlass and have exchanged my breeches for a dress. What follows is my story, mine and Minerva's. When I have finished writing down all that happened and how it came about, I plan to deliver my papers to Mr. Daniel Defoe of London, who, I understand, takes an interest in all those who have chosen to follow a piratical way of life. If our story seems a little extravagant, to have something of the air of a novel, may I assure you that this is no fiction. Our adventures need no added invention. Rather, I find myself forced to leave out certain details in order not to shock. You will read of many things, both strange and terrible, and many ways of thinking most unnatural. But I urge you, reader, to hold back your judgment of us until you have finished my account and know the full and exact circumstances of how we fell into that wicked way of life and found ourselves proclaimed notorious pirates. Make sail! Come, Nancy! It's time to go below. You are getting in the way of the sailors. They have enough to do without the worry of you falling overboard. They say that those who go to sea either look forward or look back. What lay in front of me remained obscure, so I had no choice but to reflect on my life so far. I'm sorry, Nancy. I don't have time to play with you today. I have to get ready. Ready? Ready for what? My father's found me a ship. The Amelia. Captain Thomas. I'm signed on as cabin boy. I have to leave right away. We anchor at Hungro tonight to catch tomorrow's tide. Where bound? Jamaica. Kingston. <laughs> He's of an age to go to sea. It has nothing to do with me. But it's your ship. And it's his father's will. It doesn't do to interfere between father and son. Which ship is it, my dear? The Amelia. What's the matter? What's wrong with it? The ship? Nothing. All my ships are sound. Anything less would be false economy. The captain, then, is he cruel? No more than usual. He's lately been in the Navy and runs a tight ship. He's no dancing master, that's for sure. But he's not a tyrant, neither. So what is it then? Tis an odd choice for the boy's first voyage, that's all. But I dare say he'll survive. The sea is a hard school. If it's going to be his life, it's better he learns while he's young. Come, Miss Nancy. I've been looking for you everywhere. You've got to come home and get ready. The master's expecting an important guest, and he wants you looking your best. She strides about as if she were breached, and the way she talks is enough to make a carter blush. It won't do, Ned. She cannot sew, she cannot sing, play an instrument, or do any useful thing. I don't know what you were thinking of letting her run wild like that. Such freedom is not good for a child, a girl in particular. It gives them the wrong idea. If it goes on much longer, you'll have a devil of a time getting anyone to marry her. Perhaps there's no helping her. Perhaps it's gone too far. No, no, no. There's always help. The size of her fortune will see to that. And she's not bad looking. She's not got a squint, and her features are regular. Her mouth is a little too wide, but her eyes could be fine if they were to lose that sullenness. 
I've seen far worse prospects make very good matches. She'll never be pretty, I'll give you that, but she may have looks. Of a sort, but she wants refinement. This mane of hair like straw. And she's as tawny as a gypsy. As for her hands, you leave her to me. I can make a silk purse from her. Susan? Yes, ma'am? See what you can do with this. Yes, ma'am. Who are you scowling at? When changes, you'll stick like that. The name's Susan. Susan Smith. I'm your maid. I don't need a maid. That's not what the missus says. She says you need seeing after. We don't always see eye to eye, but this time I'd say she'd be right. Not in my opinion. Your opinion don't count for much round here now, do it? Fit for rags, the lot of it. As for you, you're a challenge and no mistake. I'll tell the missus we're starting from new. I dare say your pa can bear the expense. My father's wife, Mrs. Wilkes, has ideas about how things should be. About you, too. She's made you into quite the lady. Only on the outside. What happened? Why were you so long away? I was duped by my own father. He told me that the Amelia was an ordinary trader, but she was a slaver. They began to build the platforms as soon as we were clear of the channel. At first I wondered what the hammering and sawing was. I was that green. Green as the water in the bilges. When I asked someone, they didn't even answer. I went to the captain to ask him and got a beating for my trouble. I felt all kinds of fool. Most of the others were desperate for a berth, or else they had been crimped and dispirited on board. I'd gone voluntary, put there by my own father. I found out that she was a slaver. I went to my father. But by the time I got down to the docks to warn you, it was too late. You had gone. We were children. What could we have done? I would still have sailed, I'd signed by then, and I had no way of knowing. It's a dirty trade, Nancy. Humans being treated worse, far worse than these horses here. Worse than cattle, worse than any animal. And they ain't animals, no matter what folks say. They're people, just like us. And it's not just the Africans who suffer, though it's worse for them, taken from everything they know, kept chained and shackled, packed in hundreds together as close as knives in a box. It don't compare, I know that, but it's no bed of roses for us either. We had a good surgeon, but we lost a third of the crew on the first trip to fevers and fluxes, near half on the next. If it was so bad, then why did you sign on for a second term? It was either that or find my own way back from Africa. A lot deserted, but... I stuck at it. I completed my terms and I'm here for my wages. Were you not paid? And I need my money. I intend to join the Navy. Join the Navy? I know what they say, but it can't be worse than what I've known under Captain Thomas. No matter how little the pay or how hard the conditions, it's a cleaner trade. I'd not be joining as an ordinary hand, not as I am now. I mean to be a midshipman. I have to present myself as a gentleman. I have to buy the necessary accoutrements, and money money besides my premium to buy myself a place. I have a little put by from trading on my own account, and when I collect what's owed to me, then I should have enough. That's why I'm here. Why has the captain not paid you already? Uh, he's a villain, and I do not trust him. He told me to come back tomorrow, and that was two days ago. He's not on board ship, which means he's most likely drunk somewhere, or sleeping off his excesses. In any event, I cannot find him, though I've searched every inch of the port. My father is in London with Henry. Joseph is in charge of the business when they are from home. What are you doing out here? Shouldn't you be embroidering something? <laughs> All the money the old man's spending on making you a lady, and you still prefer to spend your time with blacks and horses. Tars as well, eh? Choice company. Be off before I set the dogs on you. You heard me. 
What are you waiting for? Get going or I'll shoot you for trespassing. I have business here. Business? What business? Leave it! Keep the horse where he is or I'll shoot you too! I want payment. Then go and see your captain. Why come to me? I would if I could find him. What ship did you say? What captain? Captain Thomas, the Amelia. We came in two days since. Can't find him, you say? No. Didn't look very hard, did you? I've just left him in his cabin. I have it all here. All his men are paid off. Except for a rascal who lost a whole parcel of slaves overboard. That wretch owes him money. Get your hands off me! Where are you going? Down to the ship to get my money. No. You go on that ship and you won't be leaving it again. Ken says you owe him money. He'll keep you in the hold until it's time to sail. You'll wake up halfway across Biscay. If you wake up at all. What am I to do? Well, you could sign to another ship. Without my money? Never. You could join the Navy anyway. It's a hard life, no doubting that. But, as you say, it's a cleaner trade. I do not want to join as a tar. It isn't the harshness and hardship. I've endured that and more. I'd thought to join as a gentleman, cut a decent figure. I have my reasons for that, and now they would cheat me of it. They've had near four years' work out of me, and I'll get nothing. For all this, nothing. That was the only thing that kept me going. Wait! Wait there! This is what is owed to you. I'm paying you off on behalf of my father, since my brother is incommoded. I couldn't possibly. It's only what's due to you. Take it, son. Very well. I won't forget this, Nancy. I'm sure you'll look very well in your navy uniform. You must promise to come back so I can see it. Of course I will. I mean to make you proud of me. I'll be back when I've received my commission, and then... Then what? Then, you'll see. You will wait for me, won't you? If I knew that, I'd brave anything. Of course. Of course I will. I promise. There was no knowing when I would see him again. But I knew that I would wait for him. A lifetime, if need be. I still hold to that promise. Even now. Even if he proved true, and even if he be the one for you, you won't be able to marry him. A poor sailor lad. Why have it not? If I love him and he loves me. Love? Who marries for love? Plenty, I'm sure. Not in your class, they don't. Well, I mean to marry my love and no other. That's as maybe. The missus is making other plans. If she is, she'll just have to unmake them. What other plans? To go to Bath. Bath? We're all going for the season, Cook told me. The whole household, barring your father. He's got important business. He's expecting a big convoy of ships so can't be spared. Come over here, miss, so I can do your hair. The missus has plans for you, mark my words. What kind of plans? In the matrimony department. But I'm too young! <laughs> Miss Contrary, what about yon sailor boy you've been mooning over? Not too young for him, are you? But that's different. I do not mean to marry him yet. Never too young. Look at some of the other girls in town. Elspeth Cooper is already promised and younger than you. I've seen the man who she's to marry, twice her age with marks of pox on him. I don't want that to happen to me. I'll refuse to go. 
stand up to the missus. <laughs> I'll see that when it happens. It'll be a waste of time, let alone money. I'll tell father. Who'd be interested in me? Plenty. You're a handsome young woman, even if you ain't prepared to make the best of yourself. Don't know what you've got, that's your problem. I don't know how many would die for this colour of hair. Don't even need rags to curl it, neither. There's been interest already. In me? From whom? Never you mind. I can't see how there could be. I don't go out in society. I mean, who's seen me? You'd be surprised. I've seen the way some of the gentlemen calling here look at you. You mean friends of father's? But they're all ancient. Taint just the beauty. You'll bring a pretty penny when you marry. Someone will get a rare prize in you, Miss Nancy, and that's a fact. I've found you a fine prospect. Himself, Mr. James Phillips Calthorpe, younger son of a baronet, well-bred and well-connected. Rather handsome, don't you think? I'm sorry, Nancy, but I have to leave. But why? I have stayed longer than I intended. I only came to deliver a message. My captain's wife is here. I had a letter for her. Now I must get back to my ship. Meet me. Meet me outside. Will you walk with me, Miss Nancy? How long have you been in Bath? Three weeks or so. And do you enjoy yourself, with all the entertainments, music, dancing and so on? What do I want with dancing? I despise dancing. <laughs> Come, Nancy, that's not true. You seem to enjoy it well enough just now. That's because I was dancing with you. What about all the other young men that you've met? Do you not like to dance with them? Hardly. I like to meet young men rather less than I like to dance. I thought the two things went together. Perhaps you already have a young man and do not want to meet another. Perhaps I have. Uh, in that case... No, that's not what I meant. I meant I have no young man. Other than... Other than... Other than you. Do not trifle with me, Nancy. I'm not trifling with you. Why would I trifle? I do not trifle. Truly. Truly. Of course. I'm not the trifling sort. I have thought of you every night, and every day since I went away. If it had not been for you, I would never have obtained a place with Captain Robinson on the frigate Colchester, and he's been like a father to me. You're my saviour, Nancy, but you're much, much more. You had always been there from our earliest years, like a sister, Always a friend, strong and brave and loyal. When we were playmates, do you remember? But when I came back, you were different. You were dressed like a lady, in silks and satins. You seemed to have gone so far above me, a common sailor, and you a rich man's daughter. I thought that I could never... You were the finest, cleanest, prettiest thing I'd seen in an age. I was so glad to see you, but it seemed so hopeless. I vowed that I would not come back until I'd made my way in life, until I was in a position... In a position to do what? To ask your father for your hand. I have my commission now, Nancy. I have money from prizes and my wages. My prospects are good. I should make captain... I do not care a fig for that. I am not my father. You can save the speeches for him. You could come home barefoot in a sailor's rig and I would still want to marry you. In that case... We will be sweethearts, you and I, promised to each other. Take this as a token. Then you must have this. I'll wear it around my neck. Now I must go. I have to ride back to Bristol and there's going to be a storm. <laughs> I beg your pardon. 
What did you say? The merchant's daughter is bad enough, but a sailor's whore, I can never endure. At least he's not a rake like you two. He risks his life for king and country. Who do you think you are to slight the jacket blue? <laughs> 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 I won't sleep a wink. I don't like the sound of it. If it be like this here, what's it going to be like in Bristol? Or out in the Channel? There will be wrecks tonight. You see if there's not. Oh dear. What's that all about? The master says to come home. Oh, dear lord. Don't fuss, madam. I can't bear it. Father. You be quiet, sir. If we are ruined, it's largely your doing. What you have done is near criminal. Where are the funds I forwarded to you in order to secure our cargoes? You borrowed on expectation of profit, and now the whole lot is lost. All at the bottom of the sea. How am I to pay the creditors? How am I to pay the planters whose sugars we are shipping? The merchants who have bought it? Perhaps you could tell me. I have to stand surety. How can I do that without ships and money? You are guilty of fraud, sir. Or as near as, damn it, I could turn you over to the justices. And will do if you are not very careful. I'll speak to you later. Get out of my sight! Not you, Missy. I want to speak to you. Father? Is a husband found for you? No. Prospects? In your mother's last letter, she had hopes of someone... Good. Good. These younger sons, they've not a pot to piss in. Never mind that they're aristocratic. No point in throwing good money after bad. So you're... so you're not committed? Well, not exactly. What do you mean? Speak plain. I'm promised. Oh? Who to? William. He was in Bath. We met and... William? What William? William Davies. You know him. Father used to captain the Andrew and John. Mother keeps the seven stars. Yes, that's him. He's... A sailor? You'll not marry a tar. He's not a tar. He's a naval officer. Naval officer? Ha! He's still a tar. They all are. But we're promised. Not now you're not. You can't marry without my permission, and I'm not giving it. Think me harsh, do you? Think me cruel? Go and ask the widows and orphans of Bristol. Let them tell you what's cruel. I've lost everything. Everything! What ships I have left will have to be sold to repay the debt. Do you understand? You would do your part, wouldn't you? If I ask you to. For me. For the family. Of course, Papa. Good girl. My good girl. My Nancy. Always honest and true. Your brother Joseph has turned out a sot and a waster, but I knew I could depend on you. You are my daughter, and you will do your duty. I have one chance left. One chance, and one chance only. There will be no more talk of marrying sailors. I'm expecting a guest at dinner. Make sure you've lost that sulky expression by then, miss. It's enough to sour milk. I want you at your most charming. I want you looking your best. Tell Susan. Now send Joseph to me. We must see what we can salvage from this mess. Our loss is the greatest of everyone's, isn't it? It's all over Bristol. Only one ship saved out of the whole lot coming in. Crewed by foreigners, all dark-skinned fellows, with gold in their ears and coal-black ringlets. Not a jack of them speaks a word of English came through the storm with hardly a sail torn or a spar broken. Must have been captained by the devil himself, that's what they are saying in the port. And that captain is our guest tonight?
What is it, Susan? Whatever is the matter? It's your father, miss. He's been took badly. They're bringing him upstairs now. Is he... The doctor's been called for. Tis apoplexy, the missus says. Her last husband was took with it. She knows the signs. We promise, Father. Miss Nancy, I'm so charmed to see you again. Even at this sad time. I am truly sorry for your loss. Whatever assistance I can give. Thank you, sir. You're most kind. The last time we met, you were but a child. Yes, I remember. Now you are quite the young lady. As you see. Yes, sirs. We do well. Very well. Damn it. He always did like Henry best. What's happened? Father wanted me shipped off to Jamaica to run the plantation. I'm so sorry, Joseph. Save your sympathies for yourself. You're coming with me, didn't you know? Why? Why should I go? Father's will. I'm sorry for it, Miss Nancy. I truly am. It'll not be the same with you gone. You knew, didn't you? Why did you not tell me? I was told not to. In case... In case you ran away. Ran away? Where would I go? I'm sure I couldn't say. Well? The missus thought you might panic and bolt off. Who with? Where to? With William. Twasn't me, miss. Honest. I never said a word, but she's got eyes in her head. She's seen you with him at Bath. I've not even heard from him. I dare say it's for the best. You'll probably meet some young planter out there with pots of money. I don't want any young planter. You know something else, don't you? He called. When? Just before the master was took bad. Why was I not told? Then forgotten in all the confusion. There was a note, though, from him. When? What did it say? The other day. What it said, I couldn't say. Mrs. got hold of it and threw it in the back of the fire. Said that what you didn't know wouldn't hurt you. Notes from him would only put ideas in your head and encourage you to do so much stupid. But you could have still told me. She said if you found out, she'd know who told you and she'd dismiss me. Perhaps it's not too late. I could send a note to William. There'd be no point. Navy left for Portsmouth this morning. Cook told me. Her Noah is serving on one of the ships. I am sorry, Miss Truly. But there's nothing you can do. It's a shock for a young girl, especially at first. Not at all what one expects. Takes some getting used to. I'm sure. I'm the nearest thing you have to a mother, so it rests on me. But he's hardly ever at home, so I hear. He shouldn't bother you over much. Got to eat, miss. Perhaps you're in need of some air. Ship's steady now, wind's fair. How about a turn on the deck? Other passengers find it quite a reviver. I have no desire for company of any sort. Prefer your own, do you? I do. What do you want? To see you. I'm Graham. Niall Graham. Ship's surgeon. I've come to see how you are. Very well, thank you. That's not what I hear. Why should you care? I'm not your patient. You have no choice. Everyone on board is my patient, be they passenger or crew. Now, let me see you. I can't have Miss Kington falling sick. Your family owns this ship. How would that look on my record? I am not sick. That's for me to judge. Reynolds tells me you'll take no sustenance. Bodily affliction is not the only thing we have to fear. It is possible to fall into melancholy. I'm a doctor, the nearest thing we have to a priest on board. Talk eases the soul, or so they say. Perhaps you would do me the honor of taking a turn or two about the deck. 
Fresh air will do you good. I was right about that. And I always find talk comes easier when accompanied by exercise. So let me ask, what troubles you? Well, let me start from the beginning. <sighs> I agree that, indeed, your position is grave. But you should not give up hope. You are young. There's always hope for the young. And this young man of yours, William, will not give up on you. He's a stout fellow. You speak as though you know him. Indeed I do. We serve together. The slave ship, the Amelia. The very one! Why did you not say earlier? Ha! <laughs> you scarcely gave me the chance. He was a good lad, and did his duty in difficult circumstances, believe me. I'm glad he's joined the Navy. He will make an excellent officer. I'm pleased to hear that he's doing well in the service. He doesn't know where I am, or what has happened. I have no time to explain to him. He'll think I've forgotten him or deserted him for another. Now, now, my dear. We'll get a message to him. Acquaint him with what has occurred. How? Write him a letter. On my return to England, I promise to deliver it myself. There you are, Graham. Is this your idea of how to entertain a young lady? <laughs> Have her sitting on an upturned bucket like a swab. For shame. You should have taken her to the Grand Cabin for a glass of punch or a dish of tea. My name is Adam Brew. I'm first mate here and navigator. You must be Miss Kington. How do you do? Glad to see you're feeling better. He is a grisly fellow. He's no use with the ladies. Always talking about illnesses and other gruesome subjects. I hope his company has not distressed you too much. I'm not distressed because of that. Miss Kington wants me to get a message to her young man. What young man is that? Young William. William? Which William? Every other tar is a William. A ship's boy on the Amelia, you remember? Oh, that William. He's Navy now. Is he? Could we uh, get a message to him, do you think? I'm sure we could. Between us, we know someone on every ship in the fleet. Don't it feel good to be in the sun again? Feel the wind warming the skin. That's the trade, Miss Kington. Set fair to take us straight to the islands. Damned if my soul doesn't lift as soon as we are beyond the line. I long for southern climes. Not like Graham here, who pines for a landsman's life and longs to hang his doctor's shingle in some fetid, fog-bound northern town. This is your first trip, I take it. Indeed, sir, it is. I envy you then, Miss Kingdon. Indeed I do. To view the islands for the first time with fresh eyes. To see their mountains and forests rising from the sea, like emeralds heaped on a silver salver. And when you get there, oh, such riches, such beauty. Little birds smaller than your fist, more brilliant than any jewel. Flitting about flowers brighter than any silk you will ever see. Fruit for the pickin', sweet as anything you could name. The very air about you, scented with spices. The islands are paradise on earth, it seems to me. You could search the world over and not find their equal anywhere on it. Why do you not live there, if you find it so agreeable? Keep it in, perhaps, or be a planter, a trader. Oh, no, Miss Kingdon. That could not be. I have an affliction beyond the help of psychic. Even my good friend Graham has no cure for it. No sooner am I offshore than I wish to be away again. My home is the ship. My country is the sea. The wind is freshening, turning east-nor-east. You bring us luck, Miss Kingdon. Damn me if you don't. 
With this behind us, we'll be there in no time. If I didn't know better, I'd say you whistled for it. Now, I regret I must leave you in the company of this ugly fellow. There is work to do. Don't mind Broom. He is an excellent fellow, despite his teasing ways. The men would go to hell and back for him. There's no better sailor either side of the Atlantic. You have my word upon that. Now, you must excuse me. I hope you will join us later in the great cabin. I'll make sure that the cook prepares something uh, palatable for dinner. And I'm certain that Broom will want you to sample his punch. What would happen if pirates found us? If a black hoist were to be sighted, we would strike our flag. They would board us and take whatever they wanted. We would not fight back. And risk being put to the slaughter? Not likely. What would happen once we were boarded? Most of the crew would join them, given half the chance. Not the captain, of course. The captain is a fair man, so he would probably be spared. Put in an open boat, the passengers along with him. (laughs) Your brother might not fare so well. He treats the men like servants and... No sailor likes that. Captain's the only one allowed to order them about. That's until they go on the account. Then the captain is not much different from the men. On the account? That's what we call pirating. They ain't all bad fellows. They call themselves gentlemen of fortune. And some are exactly that. I am the only woman on board. What about me? I would skewer any man who came near you until they were heaped up in piles. Give me a blade and I'll do that for myself. You can use a sword? Tolerably. I learned to fence with my brother. I see. I'm glad that we're on the same side then. What a surprising young lady you are, Miss King. Come, Nancy. I'll take care of this. Thomas, this is my sister, Miss Nancy. You are to take her to Fountainhead directly. I have business here in town. All this here belongs to your father. Miss Kington, welcome to the Fountainhead. I hope your journey here wasn't too odorous, but you must be fatigued. You will need to rest and refresh yourself. Phyllis, Minerva, this is your new mistress. Look after her well, or it will be your skin. Get those trunks into the house. And look sharp about it, you lazy, good-for-nothing black bastard. Excuse me, miss. I have duties to attend to. But after all that, it will be my pleasure to show you around. What's that noise I can hear? Cicadas, insects, they rub their wings together. They sound like nutmegs on a grater. Mr. Duke, he's waiting downstairs when you're ready, miss. Frogs. Start up about now. Get worse after sundown. Make a devil of a din. Now you're rested, I'll show you about. Over there is the grinding house. You there look lively. Can't waste a minute. Cane has to be crushed as soon as possible after cutting, or the sugar won't crystallize. Helps keep their wits about him, such wits as they've got. <laughs> Need him to hear things. Them rollers will have your arm off in no time. Which is why we keep a machete handy, just in case. Even these idle bastards learn to pay attention when they work in here. 
The juice has to be boiled within 20 minutes or it ferments and turns into molasses and it'll never crystallize. It comes down this channel. A little lime wash is added to help it granulate. Then it's emptied into the copper vats. Doesn't do to be sentimental. God ordained blacks to be for our use and our benefit. Or else why make them in the first place? Some says they're like children. Well, they ain't. Thinking that way brings danger to us all. They ain't like us. That's for certain. I've studied them for many years now. Miss Kington, in my opinion, they are like animals. Wild and vicious, but possessed of a cunning that makes them far more treacherous than any beast you could mention. You can't tame them. You can't trust them. All they respect is a whip. Don't do to be too trusting or get too familiar. Keep that in mind. Get them used to the work, used to the discipline. First of all, we brand them with this. We had a new one made to reflect the change of ownership. Silver. See? Silver makes a sharper scar. Got to rub a little oil on first to stop the skin sticking to the metal. Change of ownership? Do you mean me? Who else? This is all yours. I've been showing you your own property. I, I didn't know. I assure you that I did not know. I have it in a letter by your father's own hand. It's in his will. You are a very rich young lady. Should I expect you for dinner? Thanks kindly. But I make my own plans. Phyllis hopes you like your dinner. Am I to dine up here? I thought Mr. Duke might dine with me, but I understand he makes other arrangements. Mr. Duke don't live here. He has a small house next door. He has his own woman prepare his food for him. I do not like to dine alone. Perhaps you would join me, you and Phyllis. Oh, no, miss. That would not be allowed. Would there be anything else? No, that's all right. 